and welcome back once again to the latest edition of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show with me, Jana McCabe and me, Rachel McGill. Later on in today's show, we will be catching up with some news on Shorts Women FC as well as hearing from Lisburn Ladies as season 2023 gets underway. Before that, it's time to welcome our first guest, Kim Turner. Kim made history being part of Manchester City's first professional WSL team. She also played for Premiership side Blackburn Rovers and for the NI women's national team. She's currently Academy Director and first team coach at Glenthorne Women. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Let's take it back to the beginning. How did you get started in football? Oh, now we're going way back. Um, I started getting involved in football by going to the football matches with my dad and going and watching Glenthorne when I was seven. Um, and then I think from going and watching football, um, I just started getting into playing it and playing in school. Um, at back then there was no women's teams or anything to play for so and didn't really know of any clubs so I started way back in the day when I was seven years old just playing for my school. You said there but there wasn't many women's teams now there's obviously lots of teams now joining leagues how much has it changed since you first got involved in football? Oh my goodness huge the fact that I've even come back as a an academy director is like, incredible like there wasn't even underage girls team so I played uh, boys um, in the SBYL for Hollywood Boys up until I was 15 and straight from 15 I then went into a women's team because there was no underage girls um, teams there so the fact now that there's so many leagues, girls leagues and you know girls teams playing in the SBYL is incredible. And in your playing career you went to uni in America, what was that experience like? Probably the best experience I've ever had, I was very fortunate to get a full scholarship um, in Mississippi um, at a D1 school. Um, the only thing I didn't realise when I got there was I had to go to school. I thought it was just a, a university football programme. Um, so I did really, really really well in football my first two years and then um, I got pulled in in the second year and said, you do realise you have to go to class because you don't realise when you go over there you have to have a certain grade point average to play. And mine was dropping and I was just loving playing football and going to the gym. So my final two years I ended up going to um, school as well, going to class and I ended up with a bachelor science degree in exercise science as well as playing full time football. So at you know, eighteen back in two thousand and three, you know, that was unheard of. So I've one of the best experiences I've ever had. It's some achievement to have such a high level of like uh, education along with having a football career but you played for a couple of teams when you were over there you played for Ajax America women what was that experience like? Incredible I think I was actually too young to take in what the experience really was and what it was about I just thought about playing football all the time um, so I was really fortunate that the year I finished playing uh, uni football that I went out to LA for the summer and I played for Ajax America um, and lo and behold, it was really weird where we ended up meeting later, but Karen Bardsley was also the goalkeeper. as She was at uni out there as well. Um, and we actually got to the state finals and I actually missed the finals um, in Salt Lake City because I had to go back to uni. And then I was really fortunate then when I graduated from uh, university, I went back to LA to live and work there and I played um, WPSL again. Um, so yeah, really, really privileged to go out and play with some top players out there in the States. And from there, you went on to Iceland. What was it like playing out there? Really good. Um, I went to Iceland with um, Sarah McFadden, um, who's now in a current international, and we were roommates out there. Sarah was also at uh, uni with me. She was two years below me at Southern Mississippi. Um, so we've got a really good journey with, you, with each other. But it was a really, really good experience. Um, it was the first time I ever got to play professional football, where it was full time. I didn't really have to do anything else. Um, I was on a two year contract, but unfortunately, um, I got an MCL tour. Um, my third game in. I think me and Mac both scored in our first two or three games um, and we had to continue on there just doing rehab and it was a bit of a lonely place but thank goodness I had Big Mac to keep me company or else I don't know what I would have done uh, but yeah great experience. How difficult was it to come back from that injury? Um, that one wasn't too bad I already had surgery before then I've had a bit of a, a knee history, history going on throughout my career and I had surgery when I was 18 before I went to uni um, so that one wasn't too bad, but I think the hardest bit was I was, wasn't at home. You know, as I said, thank goodness I had Mac there. Like, she wasn't the most, you know, encouraging person. She kept on looking at me every day and going, there's no way you're coming back and playing football from that. Because <laughs> I had a big brace from there to there. You know, that's just the way Mac is. But, um, you know, if it hadn't been for her, um, I don't know if I'd have got through it. Because being injured and being in a country where, you know, not everyone's always speaking English all the time. And then when you're not at football, you're on your own. Um, it, was, it was tough mentally. Um, but you know, I was able to come back from a physical point of view because we had all the facilities there for me to do my rehab, so it was very good. And then from there you came back into UK football playing for Man City Ladies and then moving on to Blackburn. 
what's that like you know playing back then compared to what the WSL system is like now has that changed yeah massively I think football women's football has changed all over the world in the last you know 10 15 years um, when I went over to Man City the first time, they were nowhere near the top leagues. I think they were in the, maybe the first division. Um, and after being there for six months, I got a big break into Blackburn, who were in the old Women's Premier League back then, who was all the top teams of Fulham, the Charlton's, um, Everton as well. And um, I was very fortunate to stay there for four years. Um, but, you know, we'll move on to the, the Man City one, where I got to go back and, and, and experience the WSL. And I think the jump from the Premier League into the WSL with the market and the media, the commercial, the influence of the men's game as well was just incredible back then. And to see where it is now, even from back then, you know, you're, we're, what are we on? 15 years on now, you know, 12 years on. It's 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 massive and it's great to see. I think even you've underplayed it. Like I think when I think of Manchester City, it is such a big like person kind of yeah. thing. You know, it's just it's a community as more than a football club. And you've been part of that, and yeah. you're, you've made history there. You must be so proud of yourself. Yeah, I am proud, but I know I always try and stay humble um, because, you know, what football's like, you know, people don't like you to see you do too well. They always bring you back down to earth, especially here in Northern Ireland, where over in England, you know, being at the top is, is what it's seen to. It's a different mindset over there. But yes, like Man City is more than just a football team. Um, it was incredible to be a part of everything, you know, the market and the media. They were very forward thinking where every time there was a female footballer or a male footballer was a female footballer. I was an ambassador for show racism, the red card, as well with being from Northern Ireland. I got to speak a lot about the sectarian um, issues and, and things over here. And my partner with that was Gail Cliche, who was obviously an Arsenal and, and City fan. Um, kit launches and to be a part of that as an institution and a, a, as a company was, you know, such a good experience, even away from from the from the football pitch and it was something I'd never experienced before and very proud to be a part of of Man City football team one of the biggest clubs in the world now maybe not for you as a Arsenal fan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cover yours <laughs> and how did you take the professionalism of those leagues into your coaching career and that experience um good question I think it, the biggest thing is understanding that full-time football is very different than part-time football in regards to the day-to-day -day. and the biggest thing that I really learned of full-time football and now coming into coaching is it's not always about football it's always about people and people first and you know at the end of the day footballers are human beings and they're people and sometimes people forget that and I think the biggest thing for me in full-time football actually was like no this is the day-to-day -day life it's a job it's work you have to see each other every day you have to be kind you have to respect each other and I think the biggest thing for me coming into a coach is is you know let's put people first and people's feelings and, and people's values and club values before anything. You're obviously not at the Glens. Was it always an easy transition to move back home? Obviously you've been away for so long. Yes, um, it wasn't an easy transition in regards to moving because I'd been away for 20 years and I'd been in England for 13. But coming back to Glen Torn was easy because it's my home club and it felt like I was coming home. And I think I've made my family quite proud because they're all big Glen Torn East Belfast. Fans. So the transition of coming back into Glen Torn and coming back into the legacy of what was before Glen Torn, where it was Glen Torn Belfast United, who I played for, um, I just thought it was a no-brainer for me to, to continue that legacy and, and come back to Glen Torn and try and keep women's football on the front foot and hopefully bring my experiences overseas into the club and hopefully we'll start to see some of that soon. And I'm sure from coming home it's been a big change from what the women's football system was like then and now. Um, what's it like having that academy behind Glen Torn? Really good. Like, we're a very young academy. You know, there's other very good established academies in the women's game, and and I think what happened to Glen Torn was we had the name, but we just didn't have the big structure behind it. And we had we've got some great players in our academy. So for for me, you know, Glen Torn were always good because we brought really good players in, and I think now it's a time for us to really have our homegrown players and having kids coming up from eight, nine, ten. We're kind of starting to see the first of that with you know Kerry Beatty, Emily Wilson. Um, Julie Andrews, who were all a part of our academy, and it's nice to see that Glen Torn are now build, you know, creating good players and good people, and and starting to see that in our first team, and hopefully, long may that can continue. And like again, I've never really been a part of youth football before, so it's a real eye opener for me. But it's great because the kids teach you things that you don't even think of on a day-to-day -day basis. They're fantastic to work with. And there's a new women's Premiership season just about to start as we're filming this. What are your thoughts ahead of that? Are you confident? I think we're, we're confident in what we're doing. 
um, what we don't know what anyone else is doing and I think we're very confident as a backroom team and as a as a playing team that we're all on the same page we've got a good culture we've got good values we're training hard um, our testing is going well and we're confident in ourselves and I think that's all that we, c we can do at this point in the game. And is there increased competition with two more teams coming up in Lauren and Ballymena? Absolutely, I think the league growing shows the strength of the women's game um, and we welcome them obviously into the league and you know it's always going to be tough at any level of football, you know even in the, the men's premiership you see teams coming up and it is a big battle um, but I think it's fantastic for the, for the women's game to welcome that extra competition. You mentioned there there's a couple of Glen Torn players who've broken into the Northern Ireland squad. Obviously, Southampton's not that long ago now, and it was, I still it's cannot so describe <laughs> what the experience is like being over there. But obviously, there's some Glen Torn players who are in that squad. As a younger generation might take over from some of the legends that do play in the squad now, are you hoping that those Glen's girls can maybe push and be those new ambassadors for the Northern Ireland women's game? Yes, absolutely. We've got a really great balance um, in our team where we've got the kind of um, experienced internationals. We've got a couple of younger ones, you know, coming through um, that are now kind of got a lot of caps under their belt. And then what we do really well at Glen Torn is we've got a really good integration uh, pathway for our youth players through international and through club. Um, so we're definitely trying to create um, a really, really good kind of uh, situation where players can thrive at club and international level. Amazing. Thank you very much. No worries. Okay, let's pause there as we head over to Shorts Women FC, where the players are getting ready for their first ever competitive season in the NI Women's Football Association League. Uh, the season just started, ready to start. Looking forward to this one? Yes, I am, to be honest. I think it'll be good for all the team and all the players to actually play in a competitive uh, league. Last year we only played in the development league, so we were just finding our feet and finding how to play against other teams and play together. So I think this league will be good for us to improve as a team and a squad and get hopefully to win. It'll be good to actually be playing in the league rather than you know just doing friendlies and actually having a proper league to be challenging for. Yeah, that's better. Nation sharp on the toes. Let's keep talking. What's been the history of Shorts Women? Uh, we st set it up. We looked at the club actually like to set it up just before and then COVID hit. So we kind of put it on hold then obviously. And then 2000, uh, was October 21, then we basically set up a women's team. Um, and then we've been going from then since. Obviously like last year, playing at the Valmont League. Um, what was good, uh, good experience for the girls, good, um, good comp competition, good competitive games for them. Um, let us work on a few things and then obviously we played game to get into the league this year um, and came from there. What do you think is the big difference between playing in the league and playing friendlies all the time? Uh, it will be more competitive, I mean you'll be challenging for your three points all the time. I think you have a lot more to fight for in competitive football, development football you are just finding your grounds and the simple things and learning players how to like do the basics within a football match and um, where it's competitive you're up there with different teams from different abilities so you're a lot more like challenged. In terms of targets this year, what's a realistic target for shorts women? Um, we expect this to be competitive this year, we, are, we do, I would expect this to be up around the top of the league that's where we are that's what we're aiming for we are aiming trying to uh, get promotion this year um, we do have a good lot of good players there and good competitive team so um, play obviously played quite a few of the teams last year as well within the development squad so uh, target for the girls is the basically well, is to establish ourselves within the league but obviously we'd, we would expect to be uh, pushing uh, up around the top to win the league that's that's it. We always go out for every game that we want to win, and we never go out just wanting to draw or just to show up. We always are battling. Um, I think realistically, we all do want to get a promotion. We do want to move up the leagues quick as possible, and because we are up there, we are one of the gooder teams. We believe, and um, we do want to just improve ourselves, and we do want to keep fighting for everything. We want to get the wins, and we do. We would like to move up as soon as possible to the next league, and just keep going from there.
thanks again to Shorts for inviting us to their training event. Moving on to our second guest this week, a player with international experience. Casey Hoy is a former player with Linfield and Glentorn, but this year has made the switch to play for Sligo Rovers in the Irish Women's National League. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. I'll go back to that VT. Obviously, they're a completely new side. Just how big is it, these new clubs coming through? Oh, definitely. It's massive. You know, uh, the bigger the, or the more teams, the more the league grows and the more women's football is putting them up here in both Ireland and Northern Ireland. Uh, it's massive, yeah. Kim, would you agree the more teams, the better? Yes, absolutely. I think every female and um, young girl should have an opportunity to play and especially the more clubs they are around the region um, and it gives a, an opportunity for a, a young girl to play football. I think the more clubs the better. And Casey, take it back to the beginning. Where did you start in football? Um, so I was quite similar, similar to Kim. Uh, whenever I was younger, uh, growing up in Fermanagh, there was no girls teams at all. Um, so I played for the boys at Balna Mallard and uh, we played in the National League. So it was the, the top league in Northern Ireland boys football. And it was, I started there when I was about five or six and it's all started from there. Uh, and when I was before that, it was just kicking a ball about with my cousin in the garden with my, in my nanny's house. <laughs> Did you find that switch from playing with the boys to girls different or was it? Yeah, okay? definitely. You know, boys are a lot bigger, a lot more physical and they're probably a lot quicker as well. So like have, making that transition, it was quite a smooth transition for me because, you know, going from that kind of more physical, quicker, faster, sharper kind of league to the girls was definitely a smooth transition. And how did you make that transition from playing, you know, in Fermanagh in that league, but then going the likes of Linfield, like Glen Torn? Yeah, so I've been, I'm now 20, so I'd been travelling up and down for like 10 years, and um, I I just kind of got used to it. My mum and dad were never off the road. Uh, it was just, I'm, I'm very thankful for them. Like, they've put a lot of time and effort into to get me to training, so like a lot goes goes back to them. and. I, I'm kind of just used to it now. I know my dad always complains that he, I treat him like a taxi service, so he used to call himself Dad's Taxis. But I'm sure your parents are so proud of you now, how much you've achieved. Obviously, I mentioned when I was introducing you, you played for the senior Northern Ireland squad. Yeah, definitely. You know, for me, uh, obviously coming that, that distance, you know, you have to treat every training session as, as if it's your last. You know, you have to put every single bit of effort in and you really have to work, work really hard and take something from every single training session and I suppose now looking back like I, I'm really really thankful to my mum and dad for you know maybe there was games where I was coming off and me and my dad maybe fell out in the car but I suppose it's all been it's like helped me mentally and it's really helped me and I'm really really thankful for them and yeah it's been great. And what's the experience like breaking into the senior team at Linfield? Yeah like it was good yeah uh, I had grown up and I came in at under 19s but I was training with the first team so like they were really good and helping me like transition and like make that transition and they really helped me to be fair so it was really good. Obviously the two guys have something in common you've got big ties in Glen Torn played in the Champions League as well just how much of an experience was that our guest last week had also played and it seems like such an experience all around oh yeah definitely you know i'd played in it well i'd featured kind of in the squad in it with linfield but then obviously coming to the glens i i was a lot more involved in it and it, it was it's it's crazy like you're playing against the best teams and the best players in europe and nothing really comes close to to that them types of experiences and you know there's there's ups and downs obviously with romania last year was Eventful. It, was a, it was eventful, but uh, yeah, it's, it's always a great experience, you know, playing against, challenging yourself, seeing the levels of teams across Europe and really challenging yourself against them is, is unbelievable. Kim, how important is it for Belfast and teams in Northern Ireland to be playing the Champions League, not just Glen Torn? No, really important. And I think w one of the biggest things for um, teams over here that get an opportunity to play in the Champions League that hopefully now with a, a new professional status in the league that we can now um, kind of be more desirable for players across the water to come because we can now sell that the fact that if you win the league, you get to go and play in the Champions League, which are not a lot of you know female players you know get to do. So um, for the girls here, you know, in, in this country, it's massive, especially for girls who maybe don't get to play internationally. 
you know they don't get an international cap imagine getting an opportunity to play in the Champions League like I've got to coach in it this year I never got to play in it and I've done all these things amazing things as a player but I never got to play in the Champions League um, and now to be able to coach in it you know when we went last year and we almost got out of the group and you know that's one big thing that we want to do is really push on and get out of the group stages um, I think it's a massive opportunity for players over here and Casey as a player is that an opportunity you know it has pushed you on like in your move to Sligo Rovers yeah, definitely. You know, it's given me like different experiences, um, and the league is quite different. It's a lot more physical, and you know, coming up against them European teams, they're generally a lot more physical as well. So it's really helped me in terms of getting building that physical side of my game because I'm quite small when you compare me to some of the players now playing in the League of Ireland. So uh, it's been good to get that like physical experience as well as it's. Like it's European football, it is the top top football in the world. So like, you know, you want to be challenging yourself against them better players and in turn it gives you a great experience to bring back into Sligo. In Sligo is the experience in general a lot different? Is there different fan bases and different kind of setup? Yeah, definitely. Like uh I know with Sligo's a very well supported club, uh, in terms of both men and women, so it's quite a community club. Uh, and a lot of the fans do go to both the men's and women's games. So our first game, it was quite quite a shock when there was, I think it was well over 700 people were at the game and you're kind of like, w like this is crazy. You're not necessarily as used to having that many many fans. So there's definitely a big, a big support following with Sligo. So it's been great. And what does the increase in fans and support do for the women's game? Oh, it's massive, you know, it puts like a lot of people out there, you know, people are st like st women over here are starting to get noticed and uh, and it, even when you hear them cheer and it really like drives you on to go and maybe make that tackle or beat that player. So it's 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 really encouraging. We obviously mentioned earlier you've played for the senior Northern Ireland team. Would your goal to be a player in that starting eleven every week? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you know, that's something I've I've always grown up wanting to do as a kid you know playing and um, I know like it's it's real random but whenever I was in like primary school like we did some sort of project and um in the project it was like people you'd aspire to be and in mine was Rachel Furness and to like step on the pitch alongside her was massive like uh, obviously growing up in primary school wanting to achieve that and I'm hoping now that I can really push on and cement my place in in the Northern Ireland team. And would you hope to uh, push on and play, you know, professionally in the likes of England? Oh, 100%. You know, it's, it's also another goal of mine that I've always grown up wanting to do. So uh, I just need to get, keep the head down and really work hard and hopefully then get noticed to move across. Would that be something you want to do in the next couple of years? Or are you going to try stay over here and then build? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I'm, I'm 20 now, so I'm turning 21 this year. So it's definitely something that I'm, I'm hoping in the next next few years to really push on and achieve that so hopefully if I just keep keep the head down keep working hard and keep just putting performances in in the pitch every week you know it'll leave me in good stead to achieve that. And you're saying there about Rachel Furness being a big inspiration of yours are you hoping you could go on and you know break into that squad being an inspiration for young girls out there playing? Oh yeah definitely you know like with Fermanagh there's not a lot of girls do uh, make the make the trips up and down to Belfast, you know, and and I hope that I'm inspiring girls like not only in Fermanagh but the whole of the country to really uh, push on and don't let like traveling be a barrier. Let like show that it's doable um, in terms of obviously studying and time management and like really inspire girls and young kids. You know, like you see people that. You see the girls' academy now of Balna Mallard, and I'm like, that was never there. So, I'm hopefully inspiring a lot more to pick it up and take it on. Thank you very much. No problem. We'll pause there for a moment, and now we're going to head to the Blue Bell Stadium in Lisburn, the home of Lisburn Ladies. We caught up with them as they made their final preparations for the 2023 Premiership season. Yes, uh, first of all, brand new season just ready to start. Looking forward to this one? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, I think pre-season's been tough, but we're ready for the challenge and we're ready to go again. 
no, we're all really excited. It's been a long, hard pre-season. Um, we just can't wait to get the season started, get the pre-season done with all that fitness, all that running. will be worth it in the end. It's been a long, hard pre-season, you know, the running, the dark nights. Uh, so we're just really looking forward to getting started. In terms of the Premiership, what did you learn most of all last season about the Premiership? Uh, there's no easy games. Every game is tough. Every week is a struggle. So you can't go one week, oh, that's an easy win. Next week, it's just back to back. Every week is tough, very tough. Um, the standard, the quality of the players, playing against a lot of NI players. Um, it's always good to test yourself against the best in the country, so I think that's the biggest learning curve. Obviously, the big jump from Championship up to Premiership is huge. Um, the standard's a lot more. You need to give a lot more. So, yeah, a major, major adjustment for us, but uh, looking forward to going again this year and seeing how far we go. In terms of this season coming up, what's a realistic target for Lisbon ladies? Um, finish mid-table. I think we we done well last year. We held our own. Um, could have maybe done a wee bit better against the bigger teams so that's always something to aim for as well to take a few points off the big teams well coming off the back of last season with well, after the split you know with three good runs uh, three wins so we're looking sort of to push mid tail you know a couple of there's two new teams coming up hopefully get a couple of points off them and then looking to push me mid table there's a couple of teams there we could have challenged pushed a lot a whole lot further with but uh, yeah hopefully finish mid table as a team we would like to take we would like to be mid table and take one of the bigger clubs and just prove that how good we actually are. I think last year we did prove it, but I think this year there's more pressure on us and teams coming up. So, yeah, hopefully mid-table. Thanks again to Lisburn Ladies for inviting us to their training session. It was really insightful to see how they were making their final preparations and we wish them all the best for this season. And that's it from the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show this time. Thanks to our studio guests, Kim Turner and Casey Howe, and the Shorts Women and Lisburn Ladies Football Clubs. And finally, thanks to the viewer for taking the time to watch today's episode. Your support is really appreciated. Until next time, from me, Janet McCabe, and me, Rachel McGill, it's bye for now. Bye. bye.